you are here today at the birth, at the launch of a new force in British politics. Welcome to the Brexit Party. We tell them we're going and if they don't understand it, we can talk to Juncker in a language which he does understand and, and we can say, nous allons, monsieur, nous allons. I joined the Conservative Party in 1984. This is not a decision I have made lightly to leave a party for which I have fought at every election since 1987, from Maggie Thatcher through to Theresa May. I know which one I'd rather have representing us now. I got a letter addressed to me, opened it up, and it was in very spidery handwriting. And the author of the letter said, Dear Mr. Farage, during the war, I served in Bomber Command on many missions over occupied Europe. He said, I can tell you, you only start getting flack when you're getting near the target. Please welcome to the stage all the Brexit Party candidates. The idea that you should have a second referendum would be incredibly damaging, most of all to the trust in democracy from people up and down this country. The mood of the country of growing fury and anger and frustration. I don't think people in Westminster and central London have got any idea what's out there and what may happen. The people are confident in how great we are as a nation. Yeah. What we're talking about is the opportunity to be free again, free to be a self-determining nation. And that's what the people want. Leave. Leave means leave. It doesn't mean leave with a deal or leave with a bad deal. We must not and we will not allow this complete and utter shambles in Westminster to continue. We all know that the UK can do so much better than this. Please welcome to the stage, Richard Tice. Hello 
London. It's just like another Tuesday night in West London, isn't it? It's fantastic to see so many people here this evening. I think I've come to the right party. Do we believe in Brexit? When do we want it? I can't hear you. When do we want it? I have to say, you're a lot more friendly than the Electoral Commission that I spent some hours with earlier. Goodness me. Anyway, it's fantastic to have everybody here. And first of all, I'd like to give a huge thank you to our incredible candidates who've worked so hard during the recent weeks. They have... They have... They have been absolutely incredible. Most of them have never stood for public office before, but they were brave enough to put their head above the parapet and to say, enough is enough. And some of the abuse, the vitriol, the appalling signs that have been painted on walls and posters and things is utterly disgraceful. Now, It's hard to believe we've been going for just over five weeks. <laughs> I hope you'll agree with me. We have been quite busy. And hopefully on the screen we can see the video uh, that we announced, our launch video, at that press conference in a factory in the Midlands in Coventry just over five weeks ago. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. We are standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Now... More from Nigel later. I have to tell you, he's on fantastic form. He really is. He's been brilliant. I've had him in training. Um, anyway, uh, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that we all know that our country can do so much better. But instead, we've been utterly, completely, and totally humiliated humiliated by incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, and MPs who want to do dirty, dodgy, nasty, useless backroom deals. And we hear today the ultimate, ultimate betrayal from someone that I suppose we still have to call our Prime Minister for a while. So. How long has she known? How long has she known that she was going to offer a second referendum as part of a way to try and bribe and blackmail MPs into signing this appalling deal? It's an absolute disgrace. But now the truth is out. Indeed, the truth is out. We now know what this Prime Minister really stands for. She doesn't believe in anything except remaining in number 10 for that little bit longer. But we are the Brexit party. We're full of hope. We're full of optimism, full of ambition. 
because we know that things need to change. We stand for capable, common sense, competent politics. We've got to take on the establishment. We've got to take on the vested interests of the big multinationals, the CBI, and a civil service that have simply proved themselves not up to their job. We, we simply need much better people to come into politics, and that's why it's been so amazing to work with these candidates. The quality of these candidates, I have no doubt, is the highest quality candidates that have ever stood for public office in this country in a generation. And, and ladies and gentlemen, when we say, when we say that we're going to change politics for good, we mean it. We've opened our website for applications for parliamentary candidates. So we hope that lots more fantastic, capable, able people will put themselves forward. Because we all know that Brexit is a huge, huge opportunity. It's not a problem to be mitigated. It's an opportunity to be embraced with enthusiasm, with ambition, with confidence, and with belief. But there's not a lot of that in the two main parties. And what we've seen in this process is the two-party system in the United Kingdom is broken. It's time for change. And unlike others, we haven't been changing our name every other week. So, what we need to do, though, it's absolutely vital, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing okay, but my word, we've got to get the vote out on Thursday. We have got to win, and we need to win big. That means that all of you, please, don't forget, don't go on a holiday, spread the word, get the vote out, tell your family, your friends, your dogs, your friend of friends, anybody that you can talk to. We've got to get the vote out. We've got to send that very clear message. Now, I just need to do a quick straw poll. Hands up, all of you who are registered supporters. It's a pretty good start, but I reckon there's a few of you who are still holding back. No excuses, ladies and gentlemen. It's a minimum of 25 quid. And don't believe any nonsense you hear from the media. We need your support, and we need it now. And so, whilst they call me the chairman, the reality is I know where I stand. I'm actually just the warm-up act. <laughs> um, we have three incredible speakers this evening, the first of whom needs little introduction, but it's fair to say that she's had a number of phases to her career. The, like me, she was a member of a certain other political party. But we saw the light. She was an MP for that political party for 23 years. That was really just her warm-up phase. Then she realised that actually we all needed educating about dancing. So she went on Strictly Come Dancing. This was phase two. That not being enough, a bit of celebrity big brother before the big important challenge in her life to be part of the Brexit party. We're so thrilled that she has joined our campaign, our party, and has been such a fantastic speaker, campaigner, and advocate. Before we welcome Anne to the stage, let's just see her on the video. Former Conservative Minister Anne Widdecombe has announced that she will stand for Nigel Farage's Brexit party. Lifelong Conservative Anne Widdecombe has today announced that she is coming out of retirement. The whole nation is fed up to the back teeth and just wants a resolution. It isn't just the 17.4 million who have been betrayed. It is also generations to come who, if they have their way, will not grow up in an independent self-governing country. 
the national good comes first. And that's what everybody out there is saying. And what the cloth ears in Parliament just aren't hearing. If we get worn down, if we can't get a deal, oh, then just call the whole thing off. No. A Parliament full of cowards. A Parliament that is against democracy. A Parliament that believes that its will is more important than the will of the people. I shall focus on one thing. Delivering what the people voted for. Please welcome to the stage, Anne Widdicombe. you a few questions. The first one is, if we stay in the EU, will we stay in control of our own laws? And the second is, is it possible both to be in the EU and to control our own borders? And is it possible to be in the EU and to control our own trade. And finally, is it possible to be in the EU and to be governed by our own democratically elected government? Well, those four no's, ladies and gentlemen, are the answer to people who say that we did not know what we were voting for. We knew exactly what we were voting for. And we also know what the Remainers were voting for. They want us to have no control over our own laws, our own borders, our own trade, or to be governed by our own democratically elected government. That was what they were voting for. How could anybody with an ounce of pride in Britain vote for that? And we were promised, faithfully promised in 2016, that whatever was decided in that referendum would be upheld. And they didn't stop there. In 2017, both major parties stood on manifestos which said that we would have a Brexit. And what is more, Theresa May's manifesto went further. It said in black and white that no deal was better than a bad deal. <laughs> and they have spent the last two years reneging on those manifestos. And then people say to us, why haven't we got a manifesto? What is the point of having manifestos when you abandon them at the first inconvenience? Well, you know, I think this is the message we send to Westminster. They have a choice. Either they let Britain leave the EU 
or we will make sure they leave Westminster. is not the end, it is the beginning. It is the beginning of getting true democracy back into this country. It, it is the beginning of making sure that we are governed with competence, with openness and with fairness. And above all, it is the beginning of making sure that it is the people's will that is implemented, not the will of those who go against us. You know, the problem is really very simple. We have a nation which wants to leave the EU and we have a parliament which wants to remain in the EU. Well, we have to show them who's the boss. And it is both parties. Jeremy Corbyn produced a manifesto that... Jeremy Corbyn produced a manifesto that said very clearly that the result of the referendum would be implemented. And although it's quite true that the government has made a complete and utter mess of Brexit, they couldn't have done it without the full cooperation of the Labour Party. I mean, there we were immediately after the local elections, we weren't even standing, and yet people were writing us in on their ballot papers. <laughs> and the thing I enjoyed most was the expression on Jeremy Corbyn's face. They'd been boasting that they were going to make 400 gains, and they made 82 losses. <laughs> was the Prime Minister's opportunity. She should have said, Jeremy, look, we're both in big trouble. We have to deliver Brexit. Instead of which she said to him, oh, Jeremy, what would you like? <laughs> would you like a customs union? <laughs> oh, certainly. Would you like to stay aligned to the single market? Oh, certainly. To be governed by EU law. Oh, Jeremy, just tell me how much of the EU law you want us to be governed by. <laughs> you know, I said at the beginning of this campaign that we had the worst prime minister since Anthony Eden. Well, I apologize to Anthony Eden. <laughs> How often have you heard that if we leave the EU, everything is going to be chaos? Do you remember that we were told if we even dared to vote to leave the EU, everything was going to be chaos? In fact, if we leave the EU, we have a really bright future ahead of us. <laughs> we can be part of the globe instead of part of some terrible, strong, protectionist block which actually thwarts economic development, economic enterprise and our trade with the rest of the world. Oh, we're 
told we can't possibly trade uh, if we're not part of the EU. How many countries aren't part of the EU and have they all stopped trading? <laughs> the fact is we do not need the EU. The EU is a burden. <laughs> Nobody can tell me, as they sometimes try, that that really we are free to make our own laws because I spent seven years as a government minister and I know how impossible it was for us to pass any law that the EU did not want and how impossible it was for us to resist any law from them that we did not want. That is the reality. A gentleman called Guy Verhofstadt <laughs> thinks we are a colony. Well, I would say this to him, colonies have a rather disconcerting habit of revolting. <laughs> and when they have revolted, and when they have regained their independence, they can also have a habit of outstripping their former masters. Yeah. Just ask America. <laughs> so our aim on Thursday is twofold. The first is we have to send a message which will terrify Westminster. A message which they can only interpret one way, which is that their future actually depends on Britain's future being outside the EU. That is the first message. And the second message we have to send them is, we are not going to go away. <laughs> this is not just about Thursday. This is making sure that Britain leaves the EU and has a proud, free, independent future, and we will stay around as long as it takes to deliver that. Yeah. Now, I spent 55 years in a certain other party, and during that time, I did all the campaigning, all the canvassing, all the street markets, all the public meetings, and I never in those whole 55 years saw energy and commitment as I have seen during this campaign from our supporters. <laughs> So let's build on that energy, build on that commitment. After Thursday comes Peterborough, and after Peterborough comes the next general election. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your commitment to a free, independent Britain. And let's remember that is what it is about. It is not about a party. It is about a country and a cause. Wow.
Wow, ladies and gentlemen. If that's not the definition of an inspiration, I don't know what is. Truly inspiring. Thank you, Anne. And, and Anne quite rightly referred to the opportunities that we can take on the global stage. And let anybody be in no doubt, a vote for the Brexit party is a vote for a WTO Brexit. Because we know, we know the opportunities that that will present. We know that that gives us the maximum negotiating leverage. We know that no deal is always better than a bad deal. But let people be under no illusion either. A vote for the Brexit party is a vote that some of our elected MEPs should play a significant role in the future negotiating team. Because we have the skills in this team. We have the skills, the expertise and the wisdom. Unlike, and of course, we have the belief and the passion. Unlike civil servants who were sent in to do a job they didn't believe in, and surprise, surprise, they did a useless, woeful, appalling job. In terms of being on the global stage, I move on to our next speaker, our guest speaker this evening, who is the former Prime Minister and President of the Czech Republic, a staunch Eurosceptic, a passionate defender of democracy and the nation state. He also doesn't believe in political correctness. That sounds, that sounds popular. Before we welcome President Klaus to the stage, it's fantastic to have him with us. Let's just see him in action on the video. He was born during the Nazi occupation. He lived during the communist regime. He fought against the EU in order to defend his people and democracy. Some people who take freedom and democracy for granted are not able to, to understand. I don't need the European unification. Would you be ready to, to get rid of your government and to create a, a different government? There was one wonderful, bright, uplifting moment during the Czech presidency. And I am, of course, referring to the visit of Vaclav Klaus. What a wonderful speech that was coming into this chamber and telling a few home truths and pointing out that European parliamentarians and leaders are not listening to the peoples of Europe at which 200 of you got up and walked out of the room I definitely try to keep the Czech Republic as a sovereign country, as a free country. Europe needs a radical political process. Brexit needs a Brexit party. It is great that Nigel Farage created one. Please welcome to the stage Vaclav Klaus. Brexit friends, I am, I am extremely honored, extremely pleased to be asked to come here this evening and to address your political gathering. I must tell you that, um, that I am not used to speak abroad 
abroad I speak quite often, but not on such political campaign rallies. So it's not that easy for me. In a in a in a foreign language and especially after such an incredible speaker you know i am i am afraid i can't i can't compete i would like to start with saying with something what you should know and you probably don't know that you have many friends in the czech republic Many, many friends generally, and many friends connected with Brexit. That's very, that's very important. I have to tell you that in the moment when we first heard the results of the, of the Brexit referendum, many Czechs opened champagne bottles. <laughs> and uh, there... <clears throat> It was, it was a great event, not just for you, for us as well, you know. We considered, considered it not only your victory, it was a victory of all European Democrats. It was an important message. It was, the Brexit referendum was not only about Great Britain, I must tell you. It was, it was about Europe as a whole, and in this respect, it was about the Czech Republic as well. So many thanks for that. We, we, the, we the Czechs, have, are in many respects uh, the same or similar critics of the EU arrangements, of the EU post-democracy, of the EU non-sensitivity and arrogance, of the EU non-democratic substance. We similarly, we similarly as you want to make decisions about ourselves, about our country in Prague, the same as you want to make decisions about your country here in London, not in Brussels. It is, it is, it is that, it is that simple. All other interpretations are wrong and purposefully misleading. Your Brexit decision was a historic event. I, it changed, it changed Europe. It was also a fatal blow to the pride of all European mandarins, to the pride of, um, of um, the whole European Union nomenclatura. Many people, however, wrongly supposed that Brexit has been achieved just by the referendum. They were wrong. The EU political elites didn't want to accept, didn't want to accept the Brexit decisions, and they didn't want to find a positive solution. They wanted to punish to denigrate, to humiliate Great Britain as much as possible. <laughs> they, they also wanted to demonstrate to all of us in the rest of Europe, in all other EU member states, that there is no friendly exit from the EU, and that especially, that especially the small countries don't have a chance to leave the EU. That was their ambition to demonstrate. The EU behavior asked for a resolute, clear, and decisive 
British stance. It, to our great regret, and I am sure to your great regret, didn't come. Such as your country was and stays divided, was and stays hesitant, your politicians were not able to react. They probably didn't expect such a merciless and ruthless EU behavior. Not, not to expect it was, however, a great mistake. As, as I look at it from, from, from Prague at a distance, the British main political parties totally failed. And uh, they totally failed and betrayed and abandoned the British citizens, their voters. It, it had, however, one positive side effect. By doing it, by behaving in this way, they probably unwillingly created the Brexit party. <laughs> They, they created you and they helped you very much in this respect. I know that you didn't plan, you didn't ex intend to participate in these European elections, but I'm sorry to say you have to. <laughs> without you, without my good friend Nigel Farage, without... <laughs> Without the whole Brexit party, the British, I am afraid, the British indecisiveness would continue. You have to win the elections and to get a, and to get a strong mandate to influence the political stance, political stances of your country. One last remark. I have a relatively recent, 27 years ago, experience with a special exit. Some of you may remember 27 years ago, Czechoslovakia was divided into two parts now Czech Republic and Slovakia. It was a sort of exit. It was a Slovak exit from the Czechoslovak Federation. And I was the main organizer of that split, of, that, of the decision. <laughs> and um, I always, I always uh, suggested that I could voluntarily come to London to help you with, with Brexit, but you, you, didn't, you didn't ask me, however, so <laughs> you didn't ask me, however, but uh, what we learn, what we learn, we learned one important thing. We both, the Czech part and the Slovaks, wanted to find a solution. That was a totally different situation, because in your case, just Great Britain wanted to find a solution, whereas the EU nomenclatura didn't want it. So that was a big difference. <laughs> dear, dear Brexit friends, you should, in the forthcoming elections, you should give to all of us, to, you should give uh, the whole rest of Europe a good example. Many Europeans need it and many are waiting for it. Don't disappoint them. I am really glad to be here with you tonight. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Klaus, for your support, for your encouragement, for your advice, and for your wisdom. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is proof of the international recognition of the Brexit Party, proof of the opportunities that await us if we do a proper WTO Brexit. And so, and so to our final speaker. Well, well, he needs little introduction. It's fair to say that he's had a fairly significant impact on British politics. Indeed, he is without question the most influential politician that has had an influence on British history, British politics, since, I believe, the Second World War. And I talked earlier about the courage of our candidates, but the bravery and the courage of Nigel Farage over the last 25 years, who has the original, the original Brexiteer, the, the original Brexiteer, he has battled through abuse, through vitriol, through threats to his own personal safety and that of his family. And we saw that again just yesterday in Wakefield, in Newcastle. Absolutely appalling behaviour by sore losers. So it's fantastic. Before we welcome him to the stage, let's just watch Nigel in action on the screen. Cameron sent that leaflet through every home in the country which said, whatever the result, we will implement the decision. I was elected back in 1999, 20 years I've served over there, 20 years that I've stood up in that chamber. We woke up on that beautiful morning of the 24th of June 2016 and despite everything, despite what we've been told, we voted to leave and what we've seen ever since then is the most willful, persistent, deliberate betrayal of the greatest democratic exercise ever made in the history of this country. It is a disgrace. When we were promised by both of those parties, when it went into British law, yes, Mrs May, I admit, I made a mistake. I did not believe that a vicar's daughter could be so willfully duplicitous with the British nation as you've been. If we win these elections and win them big, perhaps something starts to matter again. A word that we actually made huge sacrifices twice in the 20th century to defend the very notion of democracy. It is democracy itself that has been betrayed. We must fight for it. Never again. When the two mainstream parties tell us, trust us, we will deliver, never again will we trust them. What we've got to do is take on a two-party system that is letting down this country. We've got to take them on. I'm upbeat. I'm no longer angry because I'm part of something whereby I believe we can change politics for good. Are you with us? Please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage.
Wow. Do you know, we only launched this party five and a half weeks ago. And in that space of time, we've managed to assemble this fantastic team of candidates to put before the British electorate. We've managed, we've managed in five and a half weeks to go to the head of the opinion polls. That's not bad, is it? We've managed in five and a half weeks not just to frighten the establishment. Oh no, they're not frightened. They're absolutely terrified. But perhaps most important of all, what we've managed to do in those five and a half weeks since we launched in that factory in Coventry is we've managed to give millions and millions of people in this country who were frustrated, upset, angry, on the point of saying they may never engage with the democratic process again, so sick to death were they of the shenanigans in Westminster. And you know what we've given them in the Brexit party? We've given them hope, optimism and belief in this country and in the democratic process. But it's worth, it's worth reminding ourselves of why we're here. I mean, I can scarcely believe that I'm here. 20 years I've been in that European Parliament. 20 years of getting up. One or two of you may have seen the speeches, I don't know. 20 years of getting up, giving my always helpful, constructive speeches over there. Oh no, I think Mr Van Rompuy rather enjoyed it, really. 20 years of taking on him and Mr Juncker and <laughs> Donald Tusk and <laughs> Michel Barnier and, oh, I've got better than that, Guy Verhofstadt. <laughs> 20 years of doing my bit, but 20 years of trying to do myself out of a job. 20 years of being the turkey that always wanted to vote for Christmas, so I never imagined. I'd be standing in these elections and come to think of it, if I've given them a tough time over there, <laughs> what do you think Anne Whittacombe's going to do when she gets there? <laughs> they won't know what's hit them. They won't know what's hit them. But look, the reason we're here is very simple. We had that round, I'm doing my best. <laughs> the reason we're doing this is because after that astonishing referendum, when, remember, Project Fear was in full mode, wasn't it? We had that Chancellor, George Osborne, telling us that half a million jobs would go immediately. There'd be an emergency budget. Taxes would go up. House prices would crash. Foreign and direct investment would cease to come into our nation. Trade would collapse. Plagues of black locusts would descend upon our land. We had that. Then they even shipped in and they thought this was their big card. I won't say Trump card. <laughs> but he did come from America and he was called President Obama, remember that? <laughs> Our best ally in the world. And their leader came and told us we'd go to the back of the queue if we voted for Brexit. <laughs> we had, of course, we were lucky though, lucky in the referendum that we have a state broadcaster in this country. Well, I'm sure you're all delighted paying your £150 a year to the BBC, aren't you? 
I'm surprised. I mean, personally, I'm a particular fan of the Andrew Marr show, I can tell you. But despite media bias, despite project fear, despite it all, we voted for Brexit and we did so by a large and clear majority of 1.3 million. And remember, remember that David Cameron, do you remember David Cameron? (laughs) David Cameron told us in that leaflet that went through every door in the land that our will would be implemented. And then we had a general election in which both the Conservative and Labour parties promised us that if we voted for them, they would honour the result of the referendum. And 498 members of parliament voted for Article 50. And it went into British law. And it said we would leave the European Union on March... (laughs) On March... Thank you. We would leave the EU on March the 29th with or a deal. With or without a deal. And that became part of British law. And I have to tell you that I made, without doubt, the biggest political mistake of my life. Because I believed it was going to happen. I believed they would deliver. I'm sure most of you believed they would deliver because after all we are supposed to be a democratic country and yet as the months went by from Mrs May coming back with her checkers deal all the way through her constant rejections by the House of Commons oh and by the way have you seen what she's done this afternoon I mean, just when you think she can't sink any lower, she comes back and surprises us. I mean, now she's surrendered to virtually everything. Surrendered to the customs union, surrendered to single market rules. Oh, and the icing on the cake, if you vote for her deal, there's a chance of having a second referendum. If there are any Conservatives out there who were Eurosceptic, who believe in the democratic process, who were half thinking about voting for May's Conservatives on Thursday in the European elections, you've just been told you are not wanted. But I know where they can go. The Brexit Party. Now I I watched I watched this slow motion betrayal. And I realised, as March the 29th approached, that we simply weren't going to leave. And I thought to myself, I've spent, I mean it's unbelievable really, but I've spent 25 years of my life campaigning for us to be a free and independent country. I thought through much of it that I might become the patron saint of lost causes, but I kept on going. And having seen, having seen what Parliament was going to do, and by the way, both parties here are as guilty as each other, make no doubt about that. So I had a decision to make. Would I? Would I allow myself to simply be rolled over? by the political process or would I stand up and fight and I decided I would stand up and fight and that is why I founded the Brexit party it's why we're here today Thank you. Well, I'm pleased that you're pleased, but clearly not everybody is pleased. I said to you earlier that the establishment were terrified. And of course, what they cannot believe, 
What they cannot comprehend is that we have managed in the space of five and a half weeks to get over 100,000 people to pay £25 online and to give money to the Brexit party. What an achievement that is in this country. But not content with that, not content with that, they've decided to go on an all-out attack. And yesterday we saw Gordon Brown <laughs> attack, attack the potential financial probity of the Brexit party. Yeah, that's right. Gordon Brown. <laughs> Let's work this out for a moment, shall we? Gordon Brown at attacked our financial probity. This is the man who uh, he did well done. You're really you should be up here, really, sir. <laughs> Gordon Brown, the man who sold, who told the world the dates on which he would do it, and sold 400 metric tons of gold at $270 an ounce. Thank you, Gordon Brown, for that. But worse still. Gordon Brown, who along with Tony Blair, had as their chief fundraiser, had as their chief fundraiser Lord Levy, when, and I'll try my best not to be sued for libel here, when, shall we say, an astonishing number of Labour donors went to the House of Lords and he has the effrontery to attack us for our funding? It's outrageous that you should behave like that. And of course, surprise, surprise, an hour after Gordon Brown attacks us, guess what happens? The Electoral Commission announce that they're going to mount a dawn raid on the offices of the Brexit Party. Well, let me just tell you this for a fact, all right? We have a team of four professionally trained accountants looking after the money. We're not stupid. We know what to do. And last week, last week, we met the Electoral Commission and they said our processes were correct. They had no concerns. Indeed, we said to them, would you come into our offices and look at our systems? They said, no, we haven't got time before the election. We asked them to put in writing. We asked them to put in writing the fact that our processes were good, but they didn't decide to take us up on it. And blow me down in turn up this morning, Elcom at 10 o'clock this morning. Now it was decided that I might not be the best person to greet them. <laughs> That was a good call. <laughs> so Richard got the job. And can I tell you, after seven hours today in the office, the Electoral Commission have not found a single misdeed by the Brexit Party of any kind at all. So let's, let's make it clear, shall we? Let's make it clear to the conspiracy theorists, to those who think somehow the Russians are funding us, let's make it clear to the media where our money comes from. Would you please put up your hand if you've paid your £25 to be... There we are. That... Oh, I better do it as well, haven't I, really? That is where our money is coming from. It's coming from this growing mass movement of people who are excited, energetic, optimistic and realise we will get Brexit, but we just have to stand up and fight for it again. There are there are other aspects. There are other aspects of the campaign that have been slightly unpleasant, but I'm not even going to dignify the behaviour of that yobbo yesterday by talking about it. We will simply move on. 
But why vote for the Brexit party on Thursday? Well, I think this is now about far more than leaving the European Union. This is now about a bigger, more fundamental question of democracy. Are we, are we a democratic country? Do we trust our political class? And how do you think the rest of the world now sees us? Mrs May, by her constant abject surrenders to these unelected bully boys in Brussels, has humiliated our nation and I've had enough of it. Let's stand up and be proud of who we are. Vote. Vote for the Brexit Party this Thursday. And if the Brexit Party can win this Thursday, and if the Brexit Party can win well this Thursday, we put back on the table for that new deadline of the 31st of October, Halloween, <laughs> trick or treaty. But we, if we win this election well, we put back on the table for that date our exit on WTO terms. If we win, if we win, if we win big on Thursday, we will kill off any prospect of Parliament forcing a second referendum upon us because they know they would lose. If we vote for the Brexit party and we win on Thursday, we demand, given that democratic mandate, that people out of this team, people who've got competence, people who've been in business, people who do deals for a living, unlike the career politicians on our front benches. And we demand that we are part of that negotiating team to make sure that we do leave the European Union on the 31st of October. We must be part of that process. And if we win, if we win well, if we win big on Thursday, there are a couple of really nice little bonuses that will be attached. The first is, we will quickly get rid of the worst, most duplicitous, and I still disagree with Anne Widdecombe, She's not the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. She's the worst Prime Minister in the history of our nation. She'll be gone. And you never know, you never know, given the way we are smashing the Labour vote in Wales and in the Midlands and in the north of England, you never know, a big Brexit win may get rid of Jeremy Corbyn as well. How about that? What a deal. What a deal. Buy one, get one free. How about that? But I will never, I will never make the same mistake that I made again. I keep being asked, well, what will happen? When the Conservative Party have a new leader, what will happen if somebody like Boris becomes leader? <laughs> Boris Johnson said that Mrs May's new treaty would lead us to vassalage. It would lead us to being a slave state. In fact, I thought steady on. 
I mean, he's using language even stronger than I am. What's going on here? And then what happened? What happened on the third time Mrs May brought it back to the House of Commons? Despite all he'd said and all he'd done, he voted for it. What I've learnt, what I've learnt is you cannot trust the political class in this country. We must not trust the political class in this country. And that actually, actually the two-party system doesn't work anymore. Politics is broken. Somebody, us, the Brexit party, has to challenge and break that two-party system. That is what we have to do. And we need major reform. Major reform. We've got to get rid of a House of Lords that is full of 700 of Mr Blair, Mr Blair and Mr Cameron's cronies. Oh, and the Electoral Commission. Filled up with political placemen and women, all of whom are Remainers, all of whom are part of that Westminster establishment. I think they should all be replaced and more representative of this country. We need, we need, we need wholesale political change. We're the only party fighting this European election with a clear, distinctive message. We are saying we must leave, we must leave on the 31st of October this year. We must leave with or without any form of trade agreement because we demand nothing less than this country being a self-governing, independent, proud nation who governs herself, chooses her own alliances and friendships around the world and look at the advantages we have. 2.4 billion people living in the Commonwealth. Let's reach out to them. Let's reach out to a bigger world. And if anybody thinks, if anybody thinks that what I'm asking is for you to go out and protest on Thursday, if you think I'm asking you to go out and stick up two fingers to the establishment on Thursday, well, there's good reason, of course, to stick up two fingers to the establishment, but actually I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to vote for us on Thursday as the first step to fundamentally changing politics for good in this country. We are attempting, we are attempting, and this is by far the most ambitious thing I've ever done. We are attempting a peaceful political revolution in this country. It is needed. It is needed. It is needed. Are you with us? Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Hot work. <laughs> I, I did. I think we can safely say, ladies and gentlemen, the training has paid off. <laughs> Without question, he's back and he plans to win. Now, we've just got time for a few questions. We can still have a bit of fun in politics. It's a serious business. But Marlene from the Edgware Road, she's put 40 quid on Nigel being the next Prime Minister and she wants to collect her winnings. <laughs> um, now, I'll let Nigel get his breath back. Question for Anne. Stephen from Epsom says, what happens if the Prime Minister, currently, what happens if she gets some form of dodgy deal through with today's additional amendments and changes? Anne, any thoughts? It's a microphone just there. Well, it really is terribly simple. A dodgy deal is not a Brexit. And if what they give us is a dodgy deal, 
then we will make sure that we pay dodgems too and we get them out. Now, this is a really good question that actually there hasn't been enough focus on. And so I'll ask Nigel about this. John from Hampstead, who says, there's been no mention that Remainers don't realise that staying in the EU means a more federal Europe. And I think it is an important point to address now. Oh, it's not a federal Europe. It's not a federal Europe. It's actually a unitary, centralised Europe run by people who, the, who you cannot vote for and you cannot remove. It is fundamentally not just undemocratic, it is we are not alone. And we're not... And we're not... And the Brexit party of all the political parties in Europe, the Brexit party is the clearest. We are not anti-European in any way at all. We love Europe, we love its people, we love its countries, we love its culture. We... We love its cheeses, we love its wines, well I do in particular, but we want a Europe of independent, sovereign, democratic states. Provided states are democratic, they will never, ever fight each other. Let us lead the way, as the United Kingdom, for a Europe of friends, a Europe of neighbours, but not a Europe of Junkers and Barniers and Tusk and all of these people. They love this, they love this there we go. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we've got time for this evening. But let's have you all on your feet if you're not already. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Thank you very much for coming. Have a very safe trip home. for the Brexit party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good.